Hey guys and welcome to episode 17 of the Smashing Crossbar podcast. My name is Josh and today I am joined by Ben from Corner Flag Games. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm doing very well. How about yourself? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad at all. Can't complain. Um, so pretty much, guys, on today's episode, we'll, we will review round three, obviously, and discuss the upcoming round fixture as well as any news that um, has happened in the A-League between episodes and, of course, the EPL tips to round out the show. So sit back and um, we'll get into it, mate, with obviously the round three clash against Melbourne Victory at home that happened on the weekend. Um, your take on the game? Oh, yeah, okay. So we, the first 40 minutes, I, we, we absolutely dominated and tranced over Victory. Yep. Uh, after that 40 minutes, not so great. Uh, sort of fell off a bit after that um, that that tackle that happened late on in the first half. The momentum sort of stopped and from there. And, you know, we, we had some good chances in the first half, I'll admit. You know, Ronnie Vargas is one that hit the crossbar, you know, an, an inch shorter. And that was up, up in the back of the net. And I dare say would have been a ripper for goal of the season. Yeah, look, 100%. He um, had, had an absolute blinder, um, obviously, again, between now and obviously the last three rounds. Um, he's been on fire. Um, created, obviously, nine scoring chances in, in the round on Saturday. So um, I believe that's the best of any player since Broich, um, who came up with 10 scoring chances in 2013. So... Yeah, pr- pretty pretty impressive to um, come away with that many chances and not get one in the back of the net. Very unlucky. Yeah, I, I dare say so. Um, so, yeah, look, you know, the guys played well for 40 minutes. So, um, as you said, um, the second half started to dry up a little bit um, as we got closer to the end of the match. Um, the legs got heavy and, legs, and we obviously got tired. And so, look, you know, another, another game... It may have been a little bit different. Um, hopefully, halfway through the season, when we come back and play him again, obviously down in Melbourne, um, things things will change. Clayton Zane came out and um, spoke to the media, saying that you know he thinks we've grown in the last three weeks and things are getting better. Um, but against the victory, we were, we were near flawless. Yeah. Other than the final, other than the final third. Um, I'd agree with that. You know. Yeah, and and. Obviously, it's clear as day, you know, the difference between um, this time now and obviously last time, this time last season was the goal difference. Yeah. We were banging in goals this time last season. We've scored one. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not doing as well this season in, uh, two, in that sorry. final third. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly right. So, again, two quality goals. Um, Petrados against Wellington and obviously Vargas uh, against Adelaide. They were two good goals. So... Nothing to be sneezed at. It's not like we they were ricochets or we you know we didn't deserve those goals. We, oh, um, no, 100% we, worked, we deserved we, them. We worked, we worked for both of them, so which is a good thing, which means that obviously we are getting there. It's just not happening in that in that final third. And and you know, it'll it'll take time. As I was saying to you the other day, you know, Melbourne lost the first well, they didn't lose, but they didn't win a game until round six. Yeah. And they won the grand final. So look, you know, is Irritating and as, and as frustrating as it is, um, <laughs> I still I still believe that you know, there is time and we'll yeah we'll get there we'll get oh, there yeah, we may not we may we'll we may there. we may not soar to the heights as we did last season but I still think we'll be thereabouts yeah um obviously the other big talking point I'd love to get your point of view from watching it on TV like I was at the game so. And um, I watched Loggy Jackson for 45 minutes, clear as day, right in front of me um, as he was um, running up and down my wing. But um, Loggy Jackson's performance. Now, it's no question that it's a massive talking point with the fans. Yeah. A lot of fans are on his side. Yeah. Um, saying he's doing a great job, but there are a lot of fans that aren't happy with his performance, believe that he's not up to where we feel he should be or up to where he was last season. Um, so what, what, what's your what's your take on Lockie? Is he, is he 
is he doing enough for you or do you think we need to possibly look at changing it up there on the left? Look, I, I don't think... Look, I've always been a... I haven't been the greatest Lockie Jackson fan, especially um, after what happened last season with his nutmeg, although it was brilliant by... I think it was Ninkovic that smacked him last year. Last year. Um, mm. I don't think he's playing too bad down that down that left hand side. I mean, he's a, he's a, he is a natural left footer, yep. which works to his advantage. Um, he must be doing something right, especially in Ernie's mind, to um, to you know keep Vujic on the bench. Yeah. Um, I think um, what I did here as well is that in the victory game, he was told to maybe not be so defensive, a fullback, and try and. You use some of his pace, you know. He's a he's a he's a quick lad, and he's a tall lad. Um, yep. To use some of his pace to maybe go into a more attacking fullback role, which is something the Jets have always been, you know, very strong at. Being having Georgievsky and um, Voyets has got a very, you know, he's he's got a very strong attacking game for a fullback. Yeah, yeah, he was um, definitely motoring up and up up the front end um, last against Melbourne. Yeah, he, um, you know, he definitely got into the box a few times, and obviously he put a few balls all through and stuff like that. So, look, you know, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a tough decision. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who do you who do you bring in for him? Yes, okay, obviously Vuits is natural left as well. Um, but the fact for me is that the fact that he's not getting game time. Hmm where they really probably should have looked at him last week against yeah. Melbourne. It, um, just because I think getting closer to the end, probably the last 20 minutes or so, I think Lockie had, mm-hmm. you know, he'd, he'd done enough and I think he needed to go. Um, yeah, he, he, did, he did look a bit spent. You know, and, and that's it. That's it. And that's just, again, not because he spent the last, he spent the whole 90 minutes frigging doing things wrong. It's, it's, you know, he was motoring up and down that wing. He was moving a lot. Um, so he can't have been at full pace. There's there's no there's guarantee hundred percent guarantee in that. Yeah. So yeah, for the, for lot for Ernie not to use him then gives me a good you know well for me an indication that either Boots is not a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and we'll use him if it's a last resort sort of thing, and Lockie gets injured. Yeah. Um, and obviously, yeah. Look, you know, yeah, Tom will tell. We've seen him do brilliant things. You and I were there in the crowd when we beat the Central Coast eight two, and he smacked that header into the back of the net. Correct. You know what I mean? And that's what he is capable of. Like, you know, his his height, his um, aerial, you know, his aerial skills is obviously, you know, is is are his strong point. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, and- you're not going to see him hit a ball for third from thirty yards out. And, Top corner. It's just not going to happen. Or if it is, it's a no. fluke, just like the score. <laughs> um, but you know, what I mean, like that's where you want him to be. Look, a you lot know, of Lockie people, Jackson. A lot of people were also saying as well that he was caught out of position numerous times. But at the same point, if you're going to run attacking fullbacks like that, that oh, you, you, you can't be in two places at once. If you're going to give him the freedom Correct. to go forward, that's fine. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I don't think that he he picked his moments badly by any means. Mm-hmm. I, I I think he he did well as as a more attacking as a more attacking fullback, but at the same point as well, you've got to realise that if, if if Merrick's giving him a license to move forward, there's going to be points where he's going to be caught out. I dare say Georgeski would be caught out as well. When Hoffy used to play as a, as a as a right back, he used to get caught out a little bit as well. Yep. But that, that that that's just the that just comes down to the position and and, and what Ernie expects from said position. And that, and that's exactly and that's exactly it. Look, it's you know, you can't really, um, you can't can't really blame the the defence as a whole. Like, okay, we we let a few go in the first game, but obviously we've only conceded two goals. So, oh, well, what it's got to be? I can't remember exactly what the um, score was in the round one. What was that? That was two uh, one. Yeah, two oh, one. Too, too long ago now. Yes. <laughs> So that's sort of three weeks ago. Um, yeah, so that was that was two one. So two one again. So we've conceded four goals. That, that's and scored. That's and not scored bad. two. Yeah, I mean scored conceded four, scored two. 
Um, so it's not too bad. And as I said, we're not that far off the pace. No, we're not. We, uh, you know what I mean? Like, we could be a lot worse, again, if we got hammered in those last couple of games. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the fact that, you know, obviously Jair come off early. Um, Hoffy came off as well. He was spent. And obviously, um, Georgievsky. So when Georgievsky come off in the 80th minute, Stevie Yuji dropped back to defence, which was absolutely hilarious. Um, <laughs> you would have seen firsthand. Oh, man. It was the funniest thing. Like, we were just sitting there, what, me, myself, and um, Chris from Sports Castle and Chris, a mate of ours. Like, we're just we're sitting there and watching it. And next minute, you know, Jajewski's coming off. And then they bring Kanerowski on. I'm like, oh, Ken is going to go in the back line. And then he motors up, motors up to the front, and I'm like, "What? Well, that's not good. Where's he going?" Uh, and and that was my and that was my initial thought too that um that maybe uh, when he brought on Kanarowski, that Kanner was going into the back line because you know Kanner's got a history of playing in the back line as well now, Mister Utility as we used to call him. What was it two seasons ago? That's so he's it. more than capable of coming on as a, as a centre back. I it just Felt a bit weird. Yeah, hundred like, percent. To pull to pull Stevie back into a into a into a defensive, you know, almost like a, a right as a right back. That that's not something that would have sparked my mind. I mean, it's different. I'll give Merrick that. Yeah, yeah. we didn't concede goal, so. It, well, correct. Yeah, yeah we didn't we didn't concede, and by that stage, victory were sort of. Pushing quite heavily to to get another. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's one hundred percent. So yeah, look, as a whole, we didn't play too bad. Um, we definitely created chances, which was good. Um, it, it, it's only got to get better. You yeah, know I mean, we're not doing we're not doing um, anything wrong per se. It's just. You know, it's it's obviously taking time, and hopefully, the fans will stick around because obviously we've got a good crowd. Just got under just under twelve thousand mark on um, Saturday night. Yeah. So obviously, you know, it was a good turnout, and obviously the all the members were there, which was good. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll we'll say because obviously we're getting pushing close to eleven thousand members. <coughs> so we are. We're doing well. <coughs> um, Excuse me. <clears throat> so yes, yeah, so obviously, you know, the good good crowds and that, and hopefully they'll stick around. Not just look at you know you know we got beat again, stuff that you know because we again you know we do have a tendency of just only only coming to watch when we're winning games. Um, yeah. And you know as long as we stick around and support them, they'll you know they will bounce back. The coaching staff is well and truly um, capable of you know, winning games and getting us to the big dance. They we proved that last year. So yeah. Um, last season, sorry. So yeah, look, it's it's going to be. Going to be interesting, obviously. A Donovan is missing, you know, and I think they are missing that impact. Yep, I, I would agree with that. Of of a Donovan, I think he um is definitely missed up front just because you know he takes no shit. Um, he wants that ball, and he will do anything to get it, whether that be kicking people in the head, whether it be slide taking, tackling over the, you know, he, he'll do anything to get the ball, and it's is. Sometimes as frustrating as it can be, obviously him picking up a lot of cards. We need that mongrel attitude. Jair's not that type of player. No, he's not. He'd rather beat you with his feet and his skill. The Vargas is a lot the same. Um, if anything, Hoffy's the closest thing we've got up front at the moment to that mongrel um, attitude. And you, we've seen that obviously in Adelaide as well. Obviously, how he bossed the sideline to get that ball into Vargas. Oh yeah. Um. But yeah, look, yeah, we'll um, we'll quickly round off the that match. Um, did you see? I don't know if you've got or if you've got to see it or anything on the on the Fox Sports or whatever it was. Did they show Laurie's outfit? Or have you had a chance to see Laurie's outfit from Sydney? I I've seen the photos. <laughs> I've seen the photos. I don't Absolutely. think it was. I don't think it was on the broadcast, but I I, I have seen the photos. Uh, and I'm sorry, but Laurie scrubs up all right. Hey, just, as, just as a G, the, as a G um, man, bring bringing bringing out the old mare attire. Um, oh yeah, bring brought out the whips and chains. 
<laughs> and um, yeah, obviously Joey had a had a performance um, before the game there at out the front of the stadium, whatever it was. You know, he goes all right. He friggin' gave it a good crack, and obviously um, can definitely definitely got some talent off the field. But um, no, I wouldn't mind him using it whilst he's still got it on the field, though. We we definitely need him friggin' um, putting pressure, obviously, on the starting lineup we got now. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So the sooner he comes back, the better the better it'll be as well. Obviously, um, not having him not having him there isn't helping us out. Um, obviously, <coughs> but yeah, ball boy issue. Ball boy but, issues. Boy, before before we go any further, I'm, I'm going to bring this up because I've, it's been brought to my attention by a few of the guys that we were sitting with and myself. I've spoken to Laurie in regards to it. The ball boys, mate, absolutely take a knee. Oh yeah. I'm sorry, take a knee. They, this one bloke just literally stood up and sat and stood right in front of us for 90 minutes. Oh, wow. Could not see the whole middle of the pitch. I was like, and we're like, you know, mate, seriously, we'll give you 10 bucks. Sit yeah, down. Sit down. <laughs> Take a knee. <laughs> like, like, and that's it, you know, like just, just drop to your knee. You don't need to be standing up. The ball's not going to come to you every five seconds. Correct. Um, there's about three of you on each side of the pitch. Jesus. But, yeah. um, so take, yes, take a seat. Fun. Take a seat, sunshine. That's exactly right, mate. Friggin, you'll get your pie and you'll get your friggin' can of coke at the end of the game or whatever it is. You'll be, you'll be right. Just relax. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that so I spoke. We've spoken to Laurie about that, and he's going to try and maybe sort something out there. Just because you know, it just made it hard for obviously all us guys who have front row sort of tickets there, right on halfway. It's a bit, bit of annoyance, but anyway. Um, but yeah, so obviously that was pretty much it. What was your three, two, one? Oh, it, it's a difficult one. I must, I must admit, but I dare say, in in a little bout that we had in the first half, um, got to got to got to give the three to um, to Ronnie again. Instrumental mm-hmm. in in everything that we had and everything that was built up. He yep. did. He he done well. Two, uh, I'd give to Steven Ugarkovic again. Even though he did get noticed in that game mm. by his yellow card, and we've always said that you know he does his he does his best work when he's not noticed. So yep. yeah, my two to Stevie Ugi. Um and the one I'm going to give it to to the Mongol himself. I'm going to give it to Hoffy. <laughs> although uh, yeah. he didn't, although he didn't do a lot attacking wise, he he was out and about, and he was out to cause trouble and mischief, as he does, and he was hassling defenders quite well, even though he didn't get you know an an, an awful amount of service. Um, yep. I, I'll 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 I'm still going to give it a Hoffy. Yep. Defensively, he got back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can take. You can take the striker out of the defender, but you can't take the defender out of the striker. <laughs> yeah, look, um, yeah, pretty much. I give, I gave my three, two, one. Um, I give it to Chris after every mm-hmm. game for his channel. Um, so that was a week ago. I can't exactly remember who I picked, but I'm pretty sure. I know number one was Stevie UG. I, I gave him three points. I think he done everything right, mm-hmm. um, and. The balls through to Vargas and all Jair and so forth. Yeah, yeah, he's just he's just so good at what he does. Um, and that's coming from me, who I just really wasn't a fan of a couple of years ago. So, um, yeah, no, definitely got three points for me. Two was Vargas, and um, I think I, I think I went one to um, Topper. Topper, 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 topper! Had a cracking game. Yeah, absolutely, he he hasn't he? I don't think he's had a bad <laughs> game personally. All three games, so, um, and he he got the ball rid <coughs> every time. Every time it was in, he was he was pretty much one of the only ones there to, you know, clear it and get rid of it. And um, he pretty much steered the back line when Boogs wasn't there too, or friggin' was out of position. So. Mm. Um, yeah, that was pretty much how mine went on that. So we'll um, we'll move on a little bit into obviously Jets news, and obviously before we get into the 
this week's match. We'll um, talk a little bit about the uh, youth boys. Round ah, one fixture against, lads. Yeah, yeah, uh, round one fixture against Sydney FC this weekend. Um, 4.30 p.m. kickoff on Sunday. Um, so, obviously, all the Jets mm-hmm. fans and so forth get down to Adamstown Oval um, to watch the boys take on Sydney there in their opening fixture. Um, so, we've got Tristan Esquillen, Noah James in the, in the keepers. Um, yeah. Defenders, we've got Cal Gabriel, Tom Beecham, Cole Mutton, Brian Goodhue, Goodhue and uh, Kieran Hayes. Uh as the defenders, midfield, Jack Simons, Jackson Frendo, Tom Curran, and Mackie Petratos, younger brother of Dimmy. Ah, uh, the rest um, of the Petratos clan. And Costa. And Costa, so, and Costas. Yeah. yeah, they're all here. And obviously his um his sister's playing in the in the girls' squad, so yeah. the whole family's out here. Um, which pretty much sums up why Dimmy signed a four year contract. Well, three. Yeah, four year contract. So Word on the street is he loves it here. He does. He's loving life here, and um, your whole family's here. Why'd you go? So, hundred oh, percent. Um, and obviously the forwards. Of, well, we've got Ken Harrison, um, Kai Tapaldo, Riley Smith, and Joey O'Connor up front as well. So, look, it's a pretty good squad, um, and hopefully we'll pick up three points there. So yeah, be sure to get down and support the young blokes, and um, hopefully they have a good youth league season. Um, we will talk, move on to obviously a little bit of W League, or well, well, our Jets W League news. A um, bit of congratulations and commiserations. <coughs> bit of both. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, um, as we see, uh, Larissa Crummer ruled out of the match against Chile. Yeah. Uh, due to injury, she picked up, um, I believe, in training. She made it through our round one fixture against Melbourne and um, played all right. But she's, yeah, she's pulled up a. Picked up an injury and she's she misses out, but um, well, that's no good. No, no, pretty pretty shit. But obviously, um, with her injury, sees uh, the Jets co-captain Gemma Simon get a chance to make her eighth Matilda's appearance. So, um, you know, congratulations to her. She put, she had a blinder on the weekend as well. So she did. It'll be yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely great game. So um, yeah, a bit of commiseration, but obviously a bit of a bit of congratulations. Good to see some Jets. Jets players obviously along the likes of um, Emily Van Egmont and so forth in the in the squad there. Oh yeah, Van Egmont's generally nailed on for the for the Matildas. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, be sure to obviously guys out there to um, get along to the game on uh, Tuesday night. I believe it is down at uh, McDonald Jones Stadium. So oh, they've moved. Went... Still, they're still not happy with um, number two sports ground. Yeah, well, obviously, all yeah. This is the sorry the, the Matildas. The Matildas game. Is on it on Tuesday night at oh, correct, um, yeah. McDonald Jones Stadium. But yes, yeah, the now that you brought that up, obviously we're not playing this week. We don't play it on next week against Canberra in the W League. <coughs> but, um, yeah, that has been moved from number two sports ground to McDonald Jones um, Stadium. And obviously that's why the youth side are playing at Adamstown, obviously for that same reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently number two sports ground's up at about 80% sorted, but there's still 20%. Needs to, turf needs to be relayed or something like that, so um, they're not taking any chances. And oh, that's fair enough. The girls will play at McDonald Jones, and which you know they're not they're not happy about, but you know there's not much they can do about it. And the guys will, their young mate, they'll play wherever they wherever the ball is. <laughs> that's what I used to do when I was eighteen. Didn't care where the hell where, where we were playing. Would have travelled six hours as long as there was a ball on the pitch. Oh, and, I'm the same. Um, and I was I was in the starting lineup. wasn't peeling oranges for the guys at half time. I'm, I was happy. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> obviously, a bit of um, bit of other news. Obviously, the uh, they they opened up the members bar. Yes. Um, the other the other the other night, obviously, round one for uh, sorry round three for us at, against Melbourne. So it was good. It was different. I um. Just done a done a little video for you, mate. While you to give you a look of it and so forth. That was that was it's nice. It's nice up there and nice and quiet and nice and cozy. With it will be with about three hundred people in it. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> it'll be it'll be mm-hmm. caked in like sardines. But um, yeah, it's good 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 incentive that obviously the Jets and Laurie and Joel are doing for obviously the the members, which is good. Joel come up with uh, Roy O'Donovan and um, J.K. 
yeah, that's right. Yeah, Katrimbus, which was which was good to see. It was good to see <coughs> um, Johnny come up and obviously have a little bit of a chat about his situation he's in and he's um he's fire and fit. He looks he looks fit. He looks just about ready to go. So he's just waiting for the all clears from the doctors to say that he can take the pitch and play. But um apparently he's doing training and light training and so forth. So that's what you want. He's raring to go. Um, O'Donovan's itching at the bit. He's looking fitter than ever. He looks really good. So really, yeah, he looks really, really good. Um, yeah, very fit and very trim. And he's um, hopefully, hopefully, ready to bang a few goals in for us when he comes back. So awesome. That's that's yeah, yeah. It's a good thing. So they're going to do that pretty much on a weekly basis when they're home. Um, yep. Try and get a, try and get somebody at least somebody up there to have a bit of a chat to the members and so forth. Um, be sure to go and get at each round your uh, personalised cards as well. Um, yeah, I'm not happy but... with that. <laughs> Benny's not too happy. I tried to get him a couple of tickets, a couple of um, bloody cards the other day, and uh, yeah, the, the the chick wasn't impressed with that. She's like, "No, two per person." <laughs> so... I, like, how am I meant to get one? I'm meant to stay. Yeah, and I, I said that to her. I said, like, I've got a mate in Melbourne who, you know, really wants these cards. And nah, nah, strict orders, two per person. I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. Laurie, speak, get on to yeah. it for me. I'll speak to Laurie about it. So, um, Tell I'm him sure. to just send me a full set. Yeah, that's, yeah. Please. We'll, um, we'll sort something out for you, mate. Don't stress. So, but yeah, obviously the fans who do get to the games, be sure to go get those. And, um, yeah, they're, they're quite good. They're, you know, nothing spectacular. They give a bit of bio on the people and, so forth and yeah no not too bad at all so don't, with get, that, me, mate, don't get me wrong if i could be there to get them i would get them myself but 100 percent, 100 percent, mate it's gonna come mate you watch it's gonna it's gonna take off like the bloody um the coles minis mate, mate oh you'd be god you'd be down at this local friggin park or local stadium two hours before kickoff friggin happen to, tr- to trade them <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so that's <laughs> that's what you want so um yeah no they're there <laughs> they're um yeah no they're a good little incentive obviously the kids get into it and obviously good for the kids so something to do and yeah so we'll with that we'll move into obviously the game this weekend obviously energy australia stadium energy australia stadium oh come on mate <laughs> get up with get that up for with, a long time get up with the decades mate um get up newcastle, with it son newcastle international sports center no <laughs> wrong one again <laughs> no, obviously McDonald Jones Stadium. Get down there, seven fifty kickoff again on Saturday night. You can't ask for anything more than that. Two prime slot um, on a Saturday night. Haven't seen that very often. Obviously, in the last last decade, um, <laughs> you, you used to pretty much get all the shit. <coughs> used Saturday, to uh, Saturday five o'clock or so friggin' Sundays or Fridays all all the time. Um, but yeah, yeah, get down. Obviously, taking on Sydney FC, they're flying high at the moment. Um, three points, definitely crucial in this one. Oh yeah. So obviously, um, a little bit of insight into it. Forty-one times the two teams have met. Um, Jets scoring forty goals to Sydney's sixty-six. Uh, best Jets round. But, sorry, best Jets win was in uh, round seven, two thousand eleven, twelve season when we beat them five two at the SFS. God, that was a long time ago now. It was a long, long time ago. Two thousand twelve. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was yeah, that was before I moved to Melbourne. That's how long ago that was. Oh wow. <laughs> so obviously a few talking points, mate. Um the big one, obviously, will we see changes made? Your um... thoughts? I can answer this question for you. No. Oh. Because it came out in social media and on Twitter earlier today that we've named an unchanged uh, an unchanged extended squad. Right, yeah, that, that's true. That is true. Um the only I'm... change the only change I can foresee happening or oh, like starting 11 wise, the only change that I could see happening is that if Cantor is at 100 or close to 100, he'll get a run. Yeah, that's where I was obviously going with it. You'll get the run over that's, Rosenson. That's my bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kenner off the, um after putting in a good shift last week off the bench, uh, the coaches virtually came out as well and said that you know he was very happy with his performance. So um, yeah, I dare say if he's pretty much at ninety percent fit, I um, reckon they'll run with him. His uh, track record against Sydney is very good. It is. 
So um, it's definitely one of his favourite sides to play against. So it will be interesting there. So um, And the other one I can possibly think of is the only one I, yeah, sorry, the only one I can possibly think of is Thurgate. Um, back yeah. from the Young Socceroos duties, scoring goals over there. Um, he's fit. He's raring to go. So, look, he won't start. No, I but, dare say um, he'd get a run off the bench. But I dare say the fact that he's fit and ready to go, I don't see why he wouldn't probably come on for um, someone like Jair or someone along those lines. Um, obviously, other talking points, mate, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Keeping the big names players quiet for Sydney FC. Yeah. You know, Lafondra, six goals in six games. Um, gotta got to be on him. Yeah. Got to be Nink- right on him. Ninkovic, Nink- sorry, Ninkovic and um, Brosk, obviously, as well, two, um, two more players that the Jets will definitely have to keep their eye on. Um, is where if they don't, well, could be goals a little lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's exactly right. You know, as I, as I said, I think the biggest problem we have in this will be in this fixture is fitness. Fitness. Yeah, yeah. Sydney, watching Sydney play, they go ninety minutes. There's no stop. It's one throttle and away they go. The Jets. <sighs> They get to that last sort of half hour and, you know, Hoffy's legs obviously start to die. Um, you know, Jair's legs, obviously, he's definitely not 100% fit, which um, is a bit upsetting. Um, but yeah, again, we, you know, we, we knew that been, too. Yeah, 100%. You know, he's only been here two months and Christ knows how much training he's done before he even got here. Um, yeah, but he was he's pulling punches. He's pulling extra shifts though to get his fitness up. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's just yeah, for me, that's going to be the big, the big one is the fitness level. Um, Melbourne, you know, they looked pretty good last week as well. Obviously, for the ninety minutes. Well, yeah, you don't get yeah. tired when all you do is counter attack. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's a fair. fair and when point. you score, and when you score your only one goal, you put you you park the bus. <laughs> They did. They did. Yeah, uh, Melbourne's. It's what they do. It's a thing. Yeah, it's a musket thing. Um, uh, it's musket. It's musket not wanting to lose. That's what that is. He's a defend. He was a defender, and he was a freaking that. What do you expect? Um, <laughs> park the bus when you can. Oh, there's a special guest in the studio. Special guest in the studio. Yes, I there heard is. Heard someone come through the door. You did. Who was that? It would be Joey. Oh, Joey from last week. Melbourne, from talking last about Melbourne. Week's... Yeah, we talking are talking about... about Melbourne Victory and all they do is park in the bus. Talk about Melbourne He's Victory laughing because he knows it's true. And on that note, I'm leaving. And he goes, on that note, he's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good idea, Melbourne Victory flogs. Um, but, yeah, look, it's it's going to be an interesting game, obviously, this one against Sydney. Um, yeah. What, what, what do you reckon, mate? What, what do you reckon the fixture's going to... What, what are we going to What are we gonna oh, take away from if we, it? If we can come away to... If we, if we can come away with a 2-0 loss, I'll be happy. Yeah. If we can come away with Lafond Lafond not scoring a goal, I'd be even happier. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what it is, mate. I've just got... I've got this feeling. Oh. I've got this feeling like I had when we played a, a relatively inexperienced squad against Sydney yeah. last season and absolutely put the screws to them. Yep, yep, yep. That do you remember, game, do you remember that do. game? I do remember that game. I do. I've got, was, uh... I've got that same feeling again. Yeah, yeah. Look, you know, that's any, the biggest thing is with the A League at the moment, any, anything's possible. You know what I mean? And that's <laughs> legit. Anything is possible. Christ knows what's going to happen with the VAR. Christ oh. knows what's going to happen with the referees. I'd like um, the VAR to keep its fucking nose out of it. If I'm completely honest. Oh, I, I give, I give. If I'll the ref, if the ref screws it up, let him go. Third of year first, I'll, I'll I'll give up a hundred dollars if someone freaking chucks a Sterling special <laughs> and, gets, and gets away with it and gets away oh, with it. Oh Christ, mate! Unbelievable. That was anyone... disgusting and disgraceful, oh, and you know well, it. Wow, well, wow! If anyone's seen that this morning, if he's haven't seen it, go on YouTube or if you've got up to sports, oh, go geez, watch the replay. It's all over bloody Twitter. Yeah, you can't miss it. City's Sterling's penalty, unbelievable. Absolutely fantastic. Unbelievable. 
Oh, and the fact it, the fact that he scored afterwards was just to just shit me even more. <laughs> yeah, it was disgusting. But yeah, look, you know, it's one of those things. Um, yeah. So your prediction, you reckon? Pos- sneak, it's possible sneaky win. Possible sneaky win, but as things are sitting at the moment, I'm gonna go a one-all draw. One-all draw. I'm I'm gonna go one or draw. I've just got this feeling that we're we're gonna keep Sydney quiet. Yeah right. I fucking hope so. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. This week I'll be um lucky enough lucky enough thanks to uh, Lockie Ma. I'll be watching one virtually from the sideline. Um, best seat in the house as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Bloody best pulled. best seat, best seat. But oh. uh, you just 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 cross your fingers and hope to God that um. <laughs> Maybe Ninkovic trips up on his own feet and you have to stretch the poor bastard off. <laughs> Look, mate, I'll be, I'll be happy. If I, if I have to get my ugly mug on camera, if I can do it with one of the Sydney for, for, like, for one of the Sydney players stretching them off, I'll, I'll be stoked with that. <laughs> <laughs> just as long as it's not one of ours. No, nah, it's exactly right. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> just sort of. I don't, I don't want to be stretching one of the guys off. But yeah, a little bit of sneaky banter in the back end, back end of the old Sydney players here. Be, I'll, I'll enjoy that. Um, yeah, just oh, pray to God and hope that it's Ryan Grant. Oh, couldn't have happened. Couldn't have happened to a nicer, oh. to a nicer bloke. And while you're there, mate, if he's on the stretcher, carry a pair of scissors in your back pocket. <laughs> dump, dump that mullet at the first chance you can oh, get. Yeah, it's an absolutely shocking mullet. Far out. It is disgusting. What do you do? Pair you that doing? with pair that with the pedo mo he's got. The pedo mo far out. <laughs> oh, special, special. I'm um, yeah. Obviously, we're talking a bit of you know before we obviously get into the Premier League and so forth. Um, obviously, how good how good has Boz's rants been in the last three weeks? Oh, oh Boz. Man, I he's mean, excited. there's a lot there's been a lot over the years that I haven't agreed that Boz has said. And that that is also put down to the fact that he is an ex Villa player. <laughs> and we all know my feelings on Villa players. Yeah, there's currently well. in, there's currently two in the A League. <laughs> which They're a special breed. Th- they are a very special breed of player. Um one of them I don't actually mind, and that's Delat. I've, I've, I've never, I've, I've I, I don't mind the old, the old Delat. The old Delat. The old Delat. Can't... What's wrong with the new Delat? <sighs> it, it's, yeah, he's 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 a classy he's a classy player. I'll give him that. Yeah. I'll give yeah. him that. How 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 the vial managed to get their hands on him, I'll never know. But hmm. putting that aside, you've also got Ross McCormack who. Is now one of now most definitely one of my most hated Villa players because not only has he played at the Villa, he's also now played at the coast. But he's done nothing at the coast. I can't believe how like he's literally done stuff all. I city. Was... I completely forgot that he was playing at the coast. Yeah, he's been yeah, that well... inconsequential so far for them this season. Yeah, fuck. Bolt could have done it. You saying could have done a better job? Um... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Would've... he probably could have. He but at the same point as well, our, our, our old mate got his first run on the pitch again the other day for the Gyps. Oh, fucking who? Jesus yeah. Christ. Mate, it's pretty bad when you when you sign for the coast thinking you're all shit, or, you know, all big shit and freaking thought you were going to Europe and now you can't even get a run at the coast. Like, pff, I don't think that, it's, that he can't. I, I'm pretty sure he was injured or something. No, nah, bugger that. He just can't get a run. Or, or, lack, or, or, or was lacking in fitness or something. I'm not letting him play the injury card. Fuck that. <laughs> He doesn't get injured. He's fit all the time. Just ask him. Um, I mean, we all know he comes out of friggin' window, friggin' bloody um, woolies and shit like that, holding nothing, his ice cream tub and yeah, shit like that. No, nothing fit about his Tinder game, mate. Oh, good old Tinder game. He'd friggin' give... He'd give um, good old Wireless Vlogs a run for his Wallace. money. <laughs> <laughs> he'd give um, Wireless Vlogs a friggin' yeah, good run for money. He might be able to give old William Stevens a few tips um, just to yep. get a bit more than three three on the go. <laughs> well, he, well, here's the thing, mate. Here's the thing. Who's had more matches in Adelaide? Hey, hey. Who's had more? Hey. Who, who would you say has had more Tinder matches in Adelaide? Would it be Andrew Hull or would it be <laughs> our good mate Wallace Vlogs? Mate, Terence is the king of Adelaide. Um, the king of Tinder at Adelaide. Let me tell you. I um, yeah, good, good on him. Good on him for 
going through with his friggin' ritual. He did. Wait. He's done it. He's done it. Yeah. It's up. It's up online for everybody to have a listen to. Mm, I recommend you don't. If, if you do want to, though, head over to Wireless Vlogs on YouTube. Um, check it out with uh, interview with Tomahawk. It's um, good on him. But let's leave it at that. Part of his initiation. Let's put he, it that yeah, way. Yeah, he um, took on a challenge and failed that challenge. So that was his punishment. I had to do the interview. Good on him. But um, but yeah, look, you know, it's going to be interesting. I think are going to get beat. I think it's going to be 2-1. Um, but I reckon Hoffy's going to get on the board this week. Oh, I'd love for Hoffy to get on the board. I'm oh, sorry, God. that man has done so much. Like in that playing that 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 striker's role so far this season, mm. he's done all the hard work. He's done all the hard work, and unfortunately, he don't have anything to show for it yet. Yeah, then that's then that's exactly that it. Poor, so, that um, poor bloke has run his poor skin out for three weeks, and he, he ain't got he ain't got spot yet. No, it'll come, it'll come, and you know you know what Hoffy was like last season. He got one and. That was it. That was on then. It was how many is he going to finish with? Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much everything in um, in the, in Newcastle Jets relation this week. So hopefully the boys will get up and get their first three points of the season. Um, be sure to get along and support the guys down there as well on Saturday night. It's going to be a cracking game as most games against Sydney always have been. So be sure to get down there, support the guys, cheapest beers in the A-League. I can't stress that enough for all the guys out there. Are they Chris really? And I were, Chris and I were sipping on, what was it, $7, $7.50 Canadian Club and Coke. Oh. And $5.25, $5. I think they're $5 flat for members, um, Iron Jacks. Oh. So... You can't, you can't beat that. <laughs> um, Not at all. No, I think you get about ninety cent discount on your food as well. So, which you know, whatever. It's nothing to sneeze at. Ninety cents is ninety cents, eh? Um, oh, that makes 20. up in the long run, mate. Especially if you're it's there not, all season. No, that's exactly right. You put that ninety cents away. It's a good feed and good feed in um, at the end of the season. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll give them that. So yeah, but yeah, no, obviously, yeah, be sure to get it, get down and support those guys as well as obviously the young blokes. Um, on Sunday and the uh, we got the girls as well, um, the Matildas on Tuesday night. Um, I think it's a 7.30 kickoff on Tuesday night against Chile. Is that so, game broadcast? Yeah. Yes, live on it Fox is. Sports. Beautiful. Yep, 100%. Um, Beautiful. Live on Fox I'll be watching Sports. it. So, um, yeah, that'll be on. Love watching the girls on. play. Oh, absolutely. We went and watched them last season and um, that, was, that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant against Brazil, watching Mata... Um, Mata, yeah, Mata, Mata. Play and Mata, <clears throat> um, and watching Emily Van Egmont absolutely boss her for about forty-five minutes. It was fantastic. Yeah, um, till, till she till Mata cracked the shit. Yeah, she did. She freaking stormed off the pitch. Um, That's great. So she got substituted, and Van Egmont got substituted. I think about five minutes after she did. So she must have done something right. Piss her off. Well, but worked. um, absolutely. But um, yeah. But obviously. Before, before we get into the tips, I am going to give a little, or get you, let you guys um, in on obviously a little interview that Chris from Sports Castle did with Stevie UG in the week. Um, yeah, Chris caught up with Stevie UG after training. I believe it was on Tuesday afternoon, and um, got a five-minute interview thereabouts with him, just talking obviously about you know his journey from. Um, you know, boy from Sydney, heading overseas before he even finished school and then obviously back to where he is and how he's going for the Jets and so forth. So um, thanks to Air Relax Australia, who is the major sponsor um, and obviously who's helping Chris organise all these interviews. So I'll um, try and get a few of them up when he produces them just to get them out and obviously get you guys into it, so be sure to go check out his stuff as well. But I will put that up now and I'll speak to you in a sec. Let's go. 
G'day everyone, Chris from Sports Castle, uh, welcoming you to our new series of sports shorts. Really looking forward to kicking off uh, a new video sequence of these as opposed to our previous audio concepts. So, looking forward to really speaking to everyone from you know some of the Jets and Knights players through to uh, local sports players across the sporting codes and uh, sporting spectrum. So, uh, we'll be kicking off this week thanks to our new partners at Aerolax Australia. Uh, with the Jets' own Steve Garkovic. Hope you enjoy it. Love to hear your feedback on who you'd like to see from the local sporting competitions and uh, enjoy our uh, first Sports Shorts video thanks to Aerolax Australia with Steve Garkovic of the Newcastle Jets. Oh, it's broken kindly for Yugarkovic and he scores his first goal for the Jets and they lead the F3 derby. Here we are with Steve Yogovich. How are you, Steve? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. Uh, nice and warm out there on the training paddock for you today. Yeah, it was very warm today. Nice and humid. Um, all the boys sweating it out, which is good. Mate, um, give us a bit of a background on yourself for uh, some of the guys, that some of our fans that might not be as uh, big of football fans as the others. How does uh, a boy from Sydney travel via Croatia to end up in Newcastle? Yeah, it was a bit of a, a long journey leaving home uh, at 16, 17, dropping out of school to go, go chase a dream and moving overseas. Yeah, when I hit 17, signed when I was 18, playing in the youth team overseas, um, getting promoted to the first team, and then three years there, and a bit of problems with um, not getting paid and things like that. So I decided to come home, and Newcastle came calling, and that's it. it was, that's it. So Newcastle starts. And you settled in just at the freeway, mate, signed an extension only a month or so ago, so I settled in for the foreseeable future. Yeah, signed another two years on top of this one, so locked in for the next, next three years, which I'm pretty excited about. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, obviously, on the back of last year, it's a pretty good place to be, and it looks like there's a pretty good culture around the club, you know, all the way from Laurie all the way down to the playing squad, mate. Yeah, definitely. I think you can see it, it reflects on the field and throughout the whole club. Um, we like to do things as a, as a club, not just not just players and and working staff as well. We like to get everyone involved, um, which is a good sign for family, and that's yeah, a big reason why I wanted to stay. Uh, probably not the start of the season. You guys would have been chasing. Uh, sitting not in the ideal spot of 10th but realistically not all that far away after only three rounds mate uh, what is it that you're looking at identifying obviously as a squad uh, to turn those results around and you know some close losses and draws into wins yeah I think um, we've been creating lots of chances as you saw on the weekend that first half I thought being on the field it felt entertaining and I'm sure it was entertaining for the fans it's not as if there's nothing to be disappointed with our performance we just haven't found a goal yet and I think once we grab that that goal things will come be a lot easier and yeah, just converting those chances into goals, that's the main thing. Yeah, definitely right, mate. I think, um, as you said, I was there on the weekend and there was plenty of excitement and uh, just you know, converting those opportunities once you got to that 18-yard box, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, like you said, the effort was there, tackles were there, pressure was there. I mean, they couldn't get out of their half realistically the first half hour. And to do that to, to victory was, was good. And, um, yeah, just creating lots of chances, just not being able to convert. Yeah, so obviously the big question a lot of people are talking about is the fact that you are missing sort of a more recognised striker with Roy and Joey both. Uh, on the sidelines for different reasons. Uh, is that something that you think is going to sort of still restrict you going forward or is there some other guys that you can see stepping into that void? No, you saw, well, I think last year the players we have up front, they produced Hoffman towards the back end of the year was scoring goals. Um, in pre-season he was scoring, everyone was scoring, Ronnie's been on the score sheet, Dimmy's been dangerous, just hasn't been able to find that, that goal. So I think that we are creating a lot of chances and we all have faith in the players that we have up front and like I said, once we grab that goal, I think it'll, it'll click on from there. Yeah, certainly, um, you know, a couple in the back of the net will give a bit more confidence. But um, probably a strong point this year has been the defence, mate. Um, I mean, Wellington did let in two goals, but, you know, one was a bit of an incident there, just, you know, miscommunication or uh, whatever happened there. And then a penalty, the other games have only been one goal. And, you know, the one against Adelaide was obviously a screamer from Craig Goodwin, who's in red-hot form. And last week's one, again, yeah. not, not much in it. The defence are standing strong, so once your attack can fire. Yeah, I think um, defensively we've been solid. We're not giving up many chances. We restricted victory to few chances and when they did it was probably more from our mistakes um, which is when you look at it maybe a positive thing because the mistakes that we can correct um, so yeah like I said it's we're doing well defensively and just need to grab that goal yeah uh, big test and big occasion this week obviously Sydney FC it's always a good rivalry um, when we played him at home last year that was one of the classics for yep. 2017-18 what are going to be the keys to knocking off the, the ladder leaders I think like oh, that high press early on, um, like we've been doing to Adelaide and Victory, just getting that press right, um, working with the ball, moving it, playing to our strengths and not falling into any of their game plans. Um, we want to play quick flowing attacking football, so they're the things we're going to focus on. Yeah, certainly um, they'll bring the fans back too, mate. Speaking of the fans, uh, the re-branded the re Bay 1 looks like a, a pretty decent turnout for the first week of that last week. How's that 
influence, you know, having that the fuller that is, the, the better for you guys on the field? Yeah, definitely. I think there was 11,000 people on the weekend. That's Compared to two, three years ago, that's unbelievable. Um, the fans have been great. They stuck, through, stuck by us through that tough year, and then last year they all turned out in great force. And when you look out and you look up and you see them supporting us, that's great. Um, that gives us a little bit of an extra drive, especially for myself, I feel that. Um, so yeah, it's great having all the fans and, and good um, good support. Well, hopefully, mate, we can get sort of you know 15 to 20 out there this week. I think we're yeah. up to nearly 11,000 members, so it's great to see the Hunter and Newcastle getting behind you, boys, and uh, hopefully you can put on a show and get the win. Yeah, hopefully. Awesome, mate. Well, thank you. Uh, good luck for the weekend. I've got a little gift here from our sponsors, Aerolax. Just yeah. a bit of a cap from Troy and the boys Thanks there. So, much. thank you very much for your time, mate, and good no, luck for the weekend. Thanks for having me. So, guys, once again, thank you very much, to Chris um, from Sportscastle, for that. Um, and obviously, thanks to CVG and the Jets for um, giving us a bit of his time there. Um, absolute great bloke, and hopefully, he has another blinder this week. So, mate, we'll um, wrap it up, I believe, with the EPL tips. Um, I'm going to sit down and work out how we're traveling from round 12 with the guys. I don't really want to go through last week, though. I think I had an absolute shocker. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I did, too. So, yeah, not looking forward to checking that. But anyway, um, we'll move on to the first one, Cardiff City versus Brighton. Um, Lockie's gone the draw, and Chris has gone Brighton in that one, mate. What do you reckon? I'm going to go with uh, the Seagulls, mate. Um, Brighton, yeah, um, yeah, obviously Brighton going right at the moment. They're not going too bad. Matty Ryan's having a better better time than they are personally. Mm-hmm. Um, and he will be my most hated Australian if he does end Manchester United, like the rumours are. I'll talking. agree with you there. Um, I will not be a happy camper again. Nor will I. Just rumours, and I could not see him being that stupid to go sit on the bench. Um, to possibly be the understudy and the full-time replacement for um, the hair. The hair, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so that's why I don't even freaking know who's uh, their goalkeeper at the moment because I don't watch the shit. <laughs> 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 Couldn't tell you who's playing with them. Um, all I know is Mourinho is a legend. Uh, love you, Flog. mate. <laughs> nah, love, love Mourinho. Love Mourinho. Just... Just for, the, just for the fact that he um, entertains me every week. He entertained me this morning. He trolled friggin' Juventus after their win. Um, oh, God. i seen that. Did you see it? Oh, I absolute, did. Absolute class. Cracked the what shits is... the other week because friggin'... I can't remember who exactly who it was who friggin' had a sook about it, but friggin'... Yeah, somebody ran in front of but, him and he... Yeah, I think it was Chelsea, I think. Yeah, um, I think it might have been Sadi. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, I don't know. They, someone sort of had a dig and he cracked the poos and so forth and... Within a week later, he's freaking trolling other people. So it's all right if it's all right if Mourinho doesn't. Um, oh, but Jesus. I think I think Bridgie summed that up this morning very well. Yeah, they they took a a game that will go would, would have gone down in United history um, as an absolute cracker. You know, beating Juventus in like the last minute, last couple of minutes, mm. um, to now virtually making it all about Jose Mourinho. It's always the way. You know what I mean? So, look, you know, happy days. I'm all for it. More Mourinho stuff, the better. That's the only reason I don't want him to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go bright on that one anyway. Um, Southampton, Watford. We've got Southampton, Watford. Chris has gone a draw and Lockie's gone Watford. Yeah, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go the Hornets, mate. Yep, yep, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going Watford as well. Don't think they'll get beat by Southampton there, and I don't think they're Southampton gonna have enough to get a draw of it. Um, the Foxes, the Foxes against Burnley. Um, they obviously proved that yeah, they can win after the, all the stuff that's unfortunately happened to them. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, look, you know, Lockie and Chris have gone Leicester, and I think they can smack Burnley as well. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Foxes too, mate. Yep, hundred percent. Um, Huddersfield versus West Ham. Far out. Um, <laughs> poor old Huddersfield. Yeah, look, it's it's an interesting one. Um, Chris has gone a draw. 
Uh, Lockie's it. gone West Ham. And I'm going West Ham, Huddersfield. <sighs> yeah, well. Wow, 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 wow. Fall from grace, eh? Yeah, West Ham. Well, West Ham were in that position about six weeks ago, and um, I said that they'd get out of it, and they would be a team to watch. And they are. They're they're definitely nowhere near the bottom now. But Huddersfield, they're they're going down. I think early to 12, 12 weeks into a thirty-eight round season, but I think they're going down. I don't think they're going to go anywhere close to getting out of that dogfight at the bottom. Yeah, um, I, I tend to agree with you on that one. Yeah, I, I'd love to see it for Moy's sake and obviously, uh, you know, in the hardest field, you know, I've got nothing against them and that I'd much rather see, you know, for Christ, the likes of Everton or Southampton or, you know, someone else go down. Um, but, yeah, look, you know, it's not going to happen. Um, so they're not going to, they're not going to go anywhere, I think. So, yeah, I think we're all going West Ham on that one. Yep. Newcastle, Bournemouth, Bournemouth. Um, Lockie's gone Bournemouth. Chris has gone Newcastle. Oh, I'm going Bournemouth, especially after that. After watching them play against United last week, they got very unlucky. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. And Rashford great. in the 92nd minute destroyed my tip for that game last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nah, Bournemouth. They're class. Yeah. They are just they're, they're they're class. They're um they're looking very good this season. I think they're six six at the moment. Now. Yeah, six. That's a good guess. Um, yeah. So look, you know they're they're definitely flying high, and um I don't think Newcastle's gonna have the oomph to get over them, unfortunately. So yeah, so right. I so, see. Yeah, lucky lucky boom. If Chris has gone Newcastle. And, what do you expect? He tips Everton nearly every week. So, um, <laughs> not anyway. this week. Yeah, well, uh, Crystal Palace versus Tottenham. Uh, Crystal Palace, Tottenham, Spurs, 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 Spurs. <laughs> yeah, poor old Palace. I don't think they're going to get up in this one. Uh, Liverpool, Fulham. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, in saying this, I've watched quite a few Fulham games this year. Fulham have been very unlucky <laughs> this season. I'm sorry, they're not playing bad football at all. Yeah, yeah, well... They are not playing bad football at all. I just feel better last week, so... <laughs> no, but at the same point as well, with how, with how Fulham have been playing, at, at, at the same point, they're, they're just... They're there. They're just, they're just getting so unlucky in the results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you know, friggin' four two loss to Carter, friggin' three 0 loss to Burnmouth with ten men. Yeah, look, you know, they're just yeah five one to Arsenal. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah. Look, you know, they're not just there, but they're there. There's a difference, as far as I'm concerned. Like, it's it's a class above. You know, it's not like the old days where I think the the guys that came up from the championship mm-hmm. um, had a had a lot of chance to stay up. Yeah, um, it's becoming very very difficult as we go each year goes on, just because more money gets involved and everything else, and unfortunately the. Teams that come up don't really have that unless they've got massive backing um, by the clubs, and you know, look, look at just look at Huddersfield for a prime example. Yeah, um, they just they're not getting the backing by the president, and obviously the the money's not coming in to spend. And if they don't do something about it in January, well, they're in down trouble. The, down the down the shit they go. But yeah, look, you know, Fulham. Um, yeah, look, you know. They'll give us. They'll give us a run for it. Um, I dare say we will not be impressed from our performance yesterday. So <clears throat> mm. that'll be that'll be a big talking point. So look, you know, yeah, I think I think we'll bounce back and win. But again, as you said, Fulham they do things the hard way. But yeah, in doing they, the in doing things the hard way, they also they can score goals. Oh yeah. So yeah, maybe interesting. Um. So, yeah, I think we've all gone Liverpool on that one. Yeah. Um, 
Chelsky versus Everton. Well, Ooh. fuck, eh? <laughs> do, do you even have to ask this one? Can I tip two losers? <laughs> <laughs> can they both lose? Can they both drop points? If they have a draw, can they both lose points, not gain them? Um, that'd be nice. That'd be fantastic. Imagine that. Imagine if a draw wasn't for one point anymore. If you, if you had a draw, you lost points. <laughs> If you have a draw, you get zero. If you lose, you lose points. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Imagine, yeah, that's it. You get beat, you, you get deducted a point. That'd be funny, as. Um, yeah, look, you know, I think we've all gone Chelsea on that one as well. Yeah, Chris. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't think everyone's going to get up over Chelsea. But look, you know, anything's freaking possible these days. Um, yeah, Wayne, Rooney's the come, Wayne Rooney's come out of retirement to play for England. Go figure. Um, Good on him. It's coming home. Yeah. He's had a, uh, he's had, no, to be fair, he's had a good season for DC. He has. Hey, don't yeah, don't get me wrong. He's he's killing it over there. Um, some people go over there to die. He's freaking rebuilding his career. Um, oh, that was filthy. Filthy. Sorry. I heard it. No, 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 no. I'm playing ultimate team. Of course you are. Of course you yeah. are. Strutman. Um, Strutman outside the box. Long range. Oh, off. oh, flog. Smack. Uh, last two ones, Man City versus Man United. Ah, oh, City. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go draw. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm gonna draw. I'm City, gonna draw City, City are on point at the moment. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna draw. Um, I dare say that this game, this game could be the game that puts the nail in Mourinho's coffin. No, 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 no. We can't do that, mate. We want to draw. We want City not to get any further in front of us, and I don't want Manchester to lose Mourinho. So we need to draw. Oh. Um, <laughs> so the two, the two other guys are going City. Um, and obviously the final one, Arsenal versus Wolves. Oh, as uh, much as I'd love Wolves to smack Arsenal, I really would. Yeah, see, I'm uh, in the opposite camp being at West Midlander. Well, yeah, you'd like Arsenal to beat him by 12, but, you know. Yeah, yeah that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, everyone there going Arsenal as well on that one. So that'll pretty much round out the EPL tips. Um, and that will pretty much wrap us for the episode. Um, anything else, mate, catch your eye or any topic you've got? Uh, I'd like oh, – I'm going to bring it up, even though I shouldn't really bring it up, but let's not bring cool. up the Birmingham Derby game. <laughs> oh, my! I wasn't going to – Hey, gonna... I called the correct scoreline. You did. You did. I you did. Put money on it. I said <laughs> going into it that we would lose 3-1. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was going to be us. I think I said 2-1. So, look, you know. Yeah, well, the old man said 2-1 as well. Hmm. Yeah, I said I said I said three one, and I also said the Birmingham's goal will come from a Yukovic header, <laughs> and, and I was scored, correct. You, you scored first, and I thought, "Fuck, here we go." Well, here's, um, the, well, here's the thing, mate. Juki doesn't score with his feet. No, no, we don't. He doesn't score with his feet. <laughs> Twenty bucks. He's got a headache after every freaking game he plays. Though. Um, well, he's done what? I think it was. I think it's six games in a row now. He's scored in. Yeah, and yeah, every single one it. of them is a header. Every single one. Yeah, well, we know where they freaking stick the magnet, don't you? Um, right, he's fucking head. Pardon me, but yeah, look, it was a good game. It was a good game. We, um, I think at the end of the day, we deserve the three points. Oh, you, by far, you out, the, you, the out you outplayed half. us in the second half, and we completely second, and we completely stopped. The second half, we, um, yeah, definitely ran away with it, and for, quite frankly, they should be ashamed of themselves that it wasn't. There wasn't at least another two goals, but anyway, we'll, um. We'll take it and move forward. And as I said, it's it's a tight season. It's a tight. Um, yeah, it's very tight up the top. I think there's literally between the top six, there's like two points. Yeah, there's 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 not a lot of space. Literally nothing. Um, Leeds are looking good. Yeah, it's 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 going to be an interesting season. We interesting we're just season. hoping we're just hoping that after that loss to you guys, that that doesn't. Really derail us because we were five on the trot. Yes, we're looking pretty good. As I said, if you can, if, it's I think it's Birmingham's friggin' typical friggin' 
season. Freaking if you could, could if you could convert half of your draws into freaking three points instead of one, you'd yep. be in a lot better position. Where you you these guys would be in a lot better position every season you have had in the last couple of seasons. Oh, 100 because you guys draw probably more than any other team in the competition. It's yep. freaking ridiculous. But uh, even still, I'll still take a draw. Oh, look again you against your top against your top sides. Absolutely, you should be you know you should be smacking your bottom ones and taking points when you can from the top ones. It's... Ah, mate, that's not how Birmingham work though. That's Birmingham right. always draw or lose against the bottom sides, and when we take on the top opposition, we friggin' smack them. Yeah, it's usually that's Liverpool down to a T. Um, <laughs> we get beat by friggin' all the shit sides. We actually won our won our first game this season. It was fantastic. I haven't, haven't seen that in like nearly six years. Well, mate, we beat Leeds when they were sitting top of the table. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that, that fucked them, that did, because they're freaking not sitting first now. Um, it did. It derailed yeah. them slightly. Yep. Ever so slightly. Yeah, slightly. Slightly. If they come back and smack freaking... Um, it wasn't freaking the other way. Freaking... Tractor Boys. Forest. Oh, but we, we love anybody that smacks for us, let's be fair. <laughs> yeah, they smacked for us last, last week after they got beat by you guys, so I was quite happy with that. Um, but yeah, yeah, look, yeah, that was, a, that was a good game and so forth. We'll see what happens, obviously, later on in the season. We'll have to get Dan on and talk a bit of championship football. Yeah, I think we're overdue for that. Absolutely. I was, tried to, was meant to try and get him on nearly every week, but, you know, time difference and all that shit now has just absolutely rooted that. No, yeah, that's not too bad. 11 hours isn't too bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, true. Um, but yeah, no, nah, too easy, man. Well, thank you very much for giving up your time and patience, as always. That's all right, mate. I don't mind. Thank you very much. Um, and obviously, just a special thanks to obviously a few of the guys that deal I deal with, and um, obviously Ben as well deals with. To uh, obviously Sports Castle again for his interview that with Stevie UG, and obviously. For um, obviously Chris for putting in his tips each week and obviously everything he does behind the scenes. Um, yourself, course like games, the Newcastle Jets. Obviously, without them on board, um, we have nothing happen. to talk about. Big hundred percent. Um, as well as other two other ones. Uh, Primax Sports is another massive one. Um, obviously, if you guys are looking at doing any away days this. This year, be sure to jump onto Primax Sports to sort out flights, accommodation, and stuff like that. Um, if you, again, also if you are looking at doing away days, be sure to get in contact with me, um, as I can possibly organise you guys some general admission tickets so to the game that you're going to, so that you don't have to fork out dollary dues for that on top of your accommodation, flights, and whatever else. Um, the other one as well, which I have been lacking in thanking and obviously getting you know um, you guys to know a bit more about um, Lads Entertainment Network. Be sure to go over, check the stuff out. Myself, Ben, Terence from uh, for Wireless Vlogs, and Dan from Garfield V Two. Um, it's been lacking the last couple of weeks. Usually do a weekly podcast, and obviously try and upload whatever stuff we sort of can in there. Um, so, yeah, be sure to jump over and check out that. And um, obviously Ben's content as well as he's doing everything and everything mm-hmm. at the moment. We've got about three three different segments on the go, I believe it is, at the moment. No, just the one. Just the one? Yeah, wait. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit hesitant at the moment with um, uh, what's it called? Simulation Smackdown. I don't know who to go with next. So that's what's holding me up on that. Uh, my indecisiveness oh, yeah. to choose a team. <laughs> yeah, well, true. Yeah, we, well, yeah, go check out. Obviously, the first lot of simulation SmackDown, that was Wellington Phoenix. So, um, yeah, he'll, once he's sorted that out, he'll get on to that. The next one of there, he's also got his road to glory with um, Buddy Hibernian. Mm-hmm. Um, Hibs. So all, all the Aussies over there at the moment. So yeah, And the new one. And the, and the new one. And the new one, Martin Boyle. Oh, oh Boyley. Boyley, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's so now good. officially got his Australian passport and he's been listed in uh, what, uh, squad. the squad. 
Yeah, he right, could get his first cap. Hopefully. Yep. Coming across uh, with uh, the other the other hip boys that are there at the moment, being Jamie McLaren and Milligan. Mark Milligan. Yep, yep. So um, yeah, be sure to check that out. And obviously, Ben also does a bit of live streaming on Twitch and obviously YouTube as well, um, where we just jump on and obviously whoever else he can find to banter away and play a bit of FIFA. So any of you guys out there on PS4, um, feel free, hit him up. He'll more than happily play you and talk a bit of banter. Loves it. Yeah, always up for it. <laughs> I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. And, um, yeah, that'll pretty much do for this episode. Once again, guys, I can't stress enough to like my content as well as subscribe to my channel. Also, tick the little bell that will be up as well um, so that you're notified when uh, I upload more content and videos. Be sure to jump over to Facebook as well, um, Crossbar Capers. Got me a little Facebook page there. It's where I'll upload most of my content I get on game day and um, so forth. And obviously interviews or whatever that I can possibly get with players, coaching staff and whoever will sit in front of the camera pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, pretty much until next time, guys, we hate Coast Scum. Coast Scum. <laughs> See you guys. Probably like a hell cut.